The Daedra have long played an important role in the Elder Scrolls, and that is sure to continue being the case going forward in the Elder Scrolls 6 and beyond. The purpose of this video is to go through each of the Daedric Princes and discuss specifically the role they could play in future Elder Scrolls games. This discussion will be divided up into multiple videos, with this video discussing the following Daedric Princes. Azura, Boethia, Clavicus Vile, Hermaeus Mora, and Hercene. I'm also going to be assigning a very rough importance score to each prince on the scale from 1 to 5. 1 indicates that a Daedric Prince is not particularly interesting or has little chance to play an important role going forward, while 5 indicates a Daedric Prince has a lot of potential for interesting things going forward. This is a really rough gauge, so don't take it too seriously, but I didn't want to attempt to quantify how interesting and important each Daedric Prince is to some extent. Anyways, let's start off by establishing a couple of facts. There are essentially three ways a Daedric Prince can appear in an Elder Scrolls game. First is by way of your standard Daedric side quest, which almost all of the Daedra are guaranteed to have. The second is in a manner directly tied to the main storyline. For example, the same way that Maroon's Dagon was the primary antagonist of Oblivion. Third, as a primary antagonist of a large-scale DLC, as we had in the Shivering Isles, Dragonborn, and more. Keeping this in mind, let's discuss each of the princes. First up we have Azura, the Daedric Prince of Dusk and Dawn. In Skyrim, you might recall a quest called the Black Star to obtain a Daedric artifact called Azura Star. You could also obtain Azura Star through Daedric side quests in Morrowind and Oblivion. Given this pattern, the Elder Scrolls VI will likely have a Daedric side quest that allows you to obtain Azura Star. You were also able to obtain the Ring of Azura at the end of Morrowind's side quest. In Morrowind, Azura was responsible for instigating the main quest. Because she's already played such a central role in a previous game, it's doubtful she will be directly involved in the main quest of a future Elder Scrolls game. The one exception to this is Azura is actually widely worshipped by the Khajiit. For a game set in Elsewhere, which will probably happen at some point in the future, I could definitely see Azura having a role in the main quest. Azura has a great hatred for the Dwemer, and was indirectly involved in events surrounding their disappearance. If we ever got more closure on the Dwemer, or if the Dwemer were to somehow return, Azura would certainly be brought up and perhaps even involved in some way. Azura's realm of oblivion is Moonshadow, said to be a beautiful world of blurred colors, roses, cities of silver, breathtaking waterfalls, and more. This world would be an excellent setting for a large-scale Daedric DLC. Not to mention, Azura has yet to be the primary focus of an Elder Scrolls DLC. So I believe that there's a fair likelihood one of the DLCs for The Elder Scrolls 6 or a game beyond could center around the player traveling to Moonshadow. Given that Azura has already played an important role in Morrowind's main quest, but her realm of Moonshadow has a lot of potential, she gets a score of 3 out of 5. Next we have Boethia, the Daedric Prince of Deceit, Conspiracy, and Treachery. The Ebony Mail is a well-known artifact of Boethia and was available through Daedric side quests in Arena, Daggerfall, Morrowind, and Skyrim. This artifact is almost certain to return as the reward for a side quest involving Boethia in The Elder Scrolls VI. Goldbrand is a unique katana that is another artifact of Boethia. It was available in Arena, Morrowind, and Oblivion, as well as mentioned in Skyrim. The sword was wielded by Emperor Titus Mede II in the Battle of Red Ring during the Great War. So Goldbrand could also appear as the reward for a Daedric side quest in a future Elder Scrolls game. Boethia has an interesting relationship with the Daedric Prince Malakath. There once existed an Aedra called Trinimac, champion of the Altmer Pantheon. During the Morethic Era, Trinimac and Boethia had a legendary battle, resulting in Trinimac's defeat. He was then devoured by Boethia and transformed into Malakath. This relationship could become an important part of the main quest or a large-scale DLC for a future Elder Scrolls game, perhaps in the form of some sort of conflict between Boethia and Malakath. There are three provinces in which this plot point could come to a forefront. First is in the Somerset Isles, home of the Altmer. Given how important Trinimac was to the Altmer, it would make sense for the boethia trinimac conflict and subsequent birth of Malakath to be brought up. Alternatively, the conflict could be brought up for a game set in High Rock or Hammerfell. Orsinium, home of the Orcs, is located near the border of High Rock and Hammerfell, meaning it would likely be a part of an Elder Scrolls game set in either of these provinces. 
Malakath and Trinimac are important figures in the Orcish religion. So the ancient conflict involving Boethia and Trinimac could come to a forefront for a game involving Orsinium. Much more on this when the Daedric Prince Malakath is discussed. Boethia's Realm of Oblivion is called Attribution's Share, a place of maze gardens and twisted towers. From its descriptions, it would likely make an interesting setting, but it's a little difficult to comment on the actual likelihood of it happening. Because most of the ways Boethia could play a major role actually involve Malakath, and we don't know too much about Boethia's realm, Boethia gets an important score of 3. The next Daedric Prince to discuss is Clavicus Vile. As Daedric Prince of power, trickery, wishes, and bargains, he often tricks unsuspecting mortals, and arguably deals with mortals more than any other prince. The Mask of Clavicus Vile was a Daedric artifact available in Daggerfall, Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim, and is very likely to be the reward for a Daedric side quest in future games. The Rueful Axe, which appeared in Skyrim, and Bitter Cup, which appeared in Morrowind, are Daedric artifacts that could also make a return in future Daedric side quests. Clavicus Vile has a connection to the Slowed, hated slug-like creatures known for their use of necromancy. They live on the island of Thras, near the Somerset Isles, and have a bad history with the Altmer. For a future game set in the Somerset Isles, there is sure to be some conflict between the Slowed and the Altmer, and Vile could be involved in some way. This actually has major main quest potential, for the Slowed have caused lots of problems for the Altmer, and for Tamriel as a whole, in the past. Clavicus Vile has a relationship to vampires, and for any future plots involving vampires, he could play a minor role. Vile rules over an unnamed plane of oblivion that we saw briefly in a spin-off game called The Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard. The area we saw was a tranquil countryside inhabited by deadly yellow Daedra, but there's probably a lot more to it than just that. It's difficult to say whether or not this realm could be the focus of a future DLC, but due to his extensive dealings with mortals and all of the potential mentioned earlier, Vile gets an important score of 4. Next is Hermaeus Mora, the Daedric Prince of Knowledge and Memory. The Agma Infinium is the most important artifact of Hermaeus Mora, obtainable through side quests in Arena, Daggerfall, Oblivion, and Skyrim. The Agma Infinium is almost certain to return as the reward for Daedric side quests in The Elder Scrolls VI and future games. Because Hermaeus Mora just played a central role in the Dragonborn DLC for Skyrim, it's doubtful that he'll play a major role in the near future. We may have minor dealings with Mora outside of his side quest, such as, for example, a protagonist seeking Hermaeus Mora's knowledge in order to progress in a future main quest. But another large-scale DLC is essentially out of the question. Hermaeus Mora is undoubtedly one of the coolest Daedric Princes, but unfortunately he gets an important score of 1. Last is Hircine, Daedric Prince of the Hunt and Father of Man Beasts. Hircine is the creator of Lycanthropy and the primary antagonist of the Morrowind DLC, Blood Moon. Savior's Hide is an artifact of Hircine that was available in Oblivion and Skyrim via Daedric side quests. Hircine's Ring was an artifact that was available in Daggerfall, Blood Moon, and Skyrim. Both artifacts are likely to return as the reward for Daedric side quests in The Elder Scrolls VI and future games. Finally, Spear of the Hunter is a unique reward from the Blood Moon DLC and could also make a future appearance. As the creator of Lycanthropy, there are many ways for Hircine to be involved in a future Elder Scrolls game in a major way. Different lycanthropes can be found across Tamriel, including werewolves in all provinces, werebats and werevultures in Valenwood, werelions in the jungles of elsewhere, werecrocodiles in the swamps of the Black Marsh, and were sharks near the sea. One could imagine, for example, a game set in the Somerset Isles in which were sharks are involved in a side quest or in the main quest. Or for a game set in Valenwood, a quest that requires one to navigate the deep forests of Valenwood, wherein they encounter werebats and were vultures. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch from here for Hircine to be connected with these encounters. The various realms of Oblivion owned by Hircine are called Hircine's Hunting Grounds. The creatures who inhabit these realms are many times larger than those found in the mortal realm. The hunting grounds are mainly composed of dense woodland, vast grasslands, and plains. This would make an excellent setting for a large-scale DLC, and could introduce some of the most exotic enemies we've ever seen. Clearly, there's a chance for Hircine to be involved in something big, but he's already played a role in the DLC Blood Moon. 
which does somewhat decrease his chances of being important again. Overall, Hirsin gets an important score of 3. Alright everyone, that's gonna do it for the video. If you could take a second to like the video if you enjoyed it, then I would really appreciate it. Also, feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts on the topic down below. Otherwise, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in my next video.